Right, there are uh, two different forms of assert statement uh, given here. And um, if expression 2 is uh, void, or expression 1's not of type boolean or it's uh, wrapped class, um, then you get a compiler error. Now what happens is, um, for an assertion statement, is that um, if expression 1 is true, then nothing happens, and if it's false, then expression 2, if it's present, is evaluated and converted into a string. Or if it's not present, there's a default string is used. And this string is then used to um, construct and throw something called an assertion error exception. Uh, I've just covered exceptions, well, I haven't really covered them, I've hardly scraped the surface, but um, you get the idea. Um, these exceptions, try statements, and throw and throws and so on, are all going to have to be covered again in great detail, but uh, for the time being, what I've said will suffice. Now, the whole point about these assert statements is that um, uh, they're basically used for um, debugging. And um, you can turn them off and on from the command line when you start the program on a, a package or a class basis. And um, if it's turned off, if you turn them off, um, it doesn't carry any overhead. So that's a really quite useful facility for debugging, as you can imagine. Well, this is what the uh, synchronized statement looks like. Um, um, now, how it's used is like this. Now, um, if you've got uh, more than one thread of execution, and you can have that where, by a mechanism that I'll, I'll go into later, um, you can have more than one thread of execution running at the same time on a given machine. Now, if um, both threads are trying to read some field, the same field, and um, update it and write it back, you can get into conflicts um, with the wrong value ending up being stored. Um, yeah, it's fairly obvious to see how this can occur. Now, if um, if you got one thread and it, it reads the value, and then the other thread reads the value before the first has had a chance to update it and write it back, then if they both try to update it and write it back, you're going to get the wrong value stored. Okay, uh, and synchronization is is one of the ways to um, to avoid this sort of problem. Now, um, every object and every class has got a lock. What's called a lock. And um, this expression in there is um, a reference, so it refers to some sort of object. And uh, the synchronized statement will wait until it has acquired the lock on the referred object before it executes any of the code that's in here in there. Okay. And on completion of that code it will then release that lock. Now this ensures that only one thread at a time can execute that piece of code. Now um, you can also mark methods as being synchronized by putting the word synchronized in front of the return type. Like here, you've got a return type event if you put synchronized in front. Like that. Now, um, for a, a static method, it's the um, class itself is, is locked. So it's the class lock that's obtained. And for a, a, a non-static object, it, for a non-static um, method, rather, um, the um, object uh, lock is obtained. The particular object is being invoked, that, uh, that method is being invoked on, basically. And um, that's how you avoid uh, these conflicts. Now, um, I think it's now time to, um, now we've got a little bit more detail, to go back and do... Um, uh, classes and uh, methods in a lot more detail, I think, than we've probably covered enough.
and after the syntax yeah yeah I think I'll do classes and um, rest methods and overloading and overriding and stuff like that and initialization yeah constructors and stuff yeah